Hey, what's going on folks? This is Keith and you're watching Barber's Auto Help. Thank you so much for watching. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how I replaced the serpentine belt and the AC belt on a Ford 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Now to my knowledge, this 3.5 liter EcoBoost actually fits in a lot of your late model F-150s. I think around 2013 to present day, you can find these in the F-150 and then 2015-ish to present day, you can find these in the Expedition. Now do note before we get into this guys, there may be slight variations between the years and between the Expedition and the F-150, but for the most part, it's been my experience it's pretty well like this with some minor variances. Now, first thing I'd suggest doing, of course, is to disconnect your negative battery cable and set it aside and isolate it from the battery. And of course, the engine should not be running during this repair. Now, as you probably already know, it's near impossible to do this job from the top side of the engine unless you remove a bunch of these components here. In my opinion, it's best to get this job done from the underside of the vehicle, preferably using a lift. Now, if you have to use just jacks and jack stands, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to, for you to do this job on your back, but it is doable. And if you do do this, uh, you lift your vehicle, be sure to follow your repair manual's instruction on how to properly and safely lift your vehicle and support it, whether you're using a jack and jack stands or a two post lift or whatever you're using. Be sure that you're doing it correctly and safely. That information isn't given in this video. Now this is an image of the vehicle up underneath looking at the bottom of the vehicle from the front of the vehicle. That's the bumper up top there. And you can see right in between here, I actually had to remove a splash shield to gain access to this little port to the belts here. Some trucks may have a splash shield there, some trucks may not. If they do have a splash shield, you have to remove that. And then you can operate through this little portal that you see right here and get the job done. Now what you're looking at right here is your serpentine belt. And just to the left of it behind the serpentine belt, that's your AC belt. So naturally the serpentine belt is gonna have have to come off first before you can take the AC belt off and the way that you do that is by releasing the tension on the belt by rotating the tensioner counterclockwise and the way you do that is you take a ratchet with a 15 millimeter socket on it you place it on the head of the bolt on the tensioner there and you turn it counterclockwise. Now, once the tensioner stops rotating, don't keep forcing that nut for risk of loosening that nut, or excuse me, the bolt. You don't wanna loosen the bolt up. You just wanna turn that tensioner counterclockwise just enough to remove the tension from the belt so that you can remove the belt. If you don't overdo it, you should be fine. Now, once the serpentine belt is removed, I like to take it a step further, and a lot of guys will disagree with me on this, but I like to remove the whole tensioner altogether. It's only held on by two bolts. They have 10 millimeter heads on them. So you take and loosen those up and you remove the whole tensioner and that gets it out of the way. That way you can operate more freely when removing and installing the AC belt. Now once that's out of the way, we can turn our attention to the AC belt. In my opinion, the easiest and quickest way to do this is just to take a razor blade and just slice it right off. Now, a lot of people don't like to do that or they may want to reuse this belt for whatever reason. Maybe they're doing an AC compressor or they're doing another job and they the belt is still good and they want to reuse it. That's all good. And what you can do in that situation is you can use a flat blade screwdriver and kind of walk the belt off the back edge of the crankshaft pulley. The way that I do it is I just take a, a flat blade screwdriver I put it in between the belt and the pulley and I kind of pry it back towards the timing cover a little bit there and then I put an 18 millimeter socket and ratchet on the crank bolt and then I rotate the crankshaft clockwise and just walk that belt right off so you can do it that way also now once the AC belts out of the way you can then turn your attention to putting it back on and the best way I found to do this is by using zip ties now you're gonna go ahead and route the belt around the back side of the crankshaft pulley just like this right here. You're going to kind of leave it flat on the top of the crankshaft pulley and then you're going to tuck the rest of it towards the back there. Now you're going to have the ribs facing towards the front of the vehicle like shown here. Then on top of that crankshaft pulley you're going to go ahead and put you maybe two or three zip ties around the belt and you're going to make sure that that belt at the top there is flat with the pulley and in the grooves like it's supposed to be. Now once you got that, make sure that the belt is routed around the AC compressor like it's supposed to. Then you're gonna to wanna to take your 18 millimeter socket with probably a long handled ratchet to give you a little bit more torque. And you're gonna to start to rotate that crankshaft clockwise and that's gonna work that belt around that crankshaft pulley for you. So you're gonna keep doing that and just work it until the belt is in all the grooves all the way around that crankshaft pulley there. Now, 
while you're doing that, be sure that the belt does not slip off the AC compressor. It'll want to walk off that AC compressor. So from time to time, you're going to need to put your other hand up there around the AC compressor and kind of keep that belt in place. So once you got that done, go ahead and cut your zip ties off. Now you have your AC belt installed. Now the reason that I took the uh, tensioner off for the serpentine belt, it kind of helps to get things out of the way to do that whole process with the AC belt there. The belt tends to kind of rub up against that tensioner a little bit and maybe the zip ties will get caught up on that tensioner if it were still installed. So that's why I take that out of the way. It just makes it easier on me. It's got two bolts for crying out loud. It doesn't take much to re remove it. Now at this point here, we need to go ahead and put our tensioner back on. Uh, put your two bolts back in there, torque them down to specification. And no, I don't have that torque specification here. You'll need to refer to your repair manual for that. And then once your serpentine belt tensioner is installed, you can then go ahead and route your new belt around your pulleys there. Now, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and route the belt around all of the pulleys except for the idler pulley, which is this pulley down here at the bottom. So I got it routed around all the pulleys and I got it left off of that one. So it's kind of dangling right there. Then what I do is I put my 15 millimeter socket and ratchet back on the tensioner bolt and then I turn it counterclockwise until I can with my opposite hand grab the belt and then run it up over that idler pulley. Now once I got the belt around the idler pulley I then carefully let the tensioner pulley rotate back clockwise again applying tension to the belt and then we're good to go. You want to make sure you get your tools out of there and everything and double check all your pulleys. Make sure the belt is routed in the grooves of all the pulleys all the way around and also check your AC belt too in the same manner. Now once you've checked all that you can then go ahead and uh, lower the vehicle down, reattach your negative battery cable, and go ahead and start it. Let it run for a couple of seconds, and then get back up underneath there on your back and just kind of double check it with the engine off, of course, and in part. Get back under, under there and double check everything. Make sure it's still routed correctly. And then if it is, go ahead and reinstall your splash shield or whatever you had to remove in order to gain access to do this job. Put all that stuff back together, and you're done. Folks, that's it. I sure appreciate you guys watching. Um, as always, with all my videos, please read the entire description down below this video before you apply any of this knowledge. There may be some things I need to clarify. That's where I do that. Please read that, guys. And also, please read the disclaimer at the very end of it. Thank you again. Have a good one.